What is going on, Twitch? It is Wednesday. It is four o'clock, and it is time for streaming on streaming. What is up again? Uh, Todd Sharp here. Welcome to Streaming on Streaming. This stream is a weekly show right here on the AWS Twitch channel, broadcast every week. Sometimes we do some live coding, sometimes we have guests on, sometimes we do fun little demos. But this show is all about live streaming and building live streaming applications integrating live streaming into your existing applications, whatever you want to do with live streaming and Amazon interactive video service. That's what we are here to talk about. And very excited today. We have a very special guest. We have a very special episode. You've probably heard me promoting it and talking about it on social media, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, YouTube, all kinds of promos. We have a very special guest today and I'm going to bring her in now. Welcome, Linda Haviv. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. I'm How's still jamming to your uh, intro, by the way. That was a great, uh, great it, intro. <laughs> it gets it gets you shaking, it gets you moving, uh, it gets the uh, the blood running for sure. Uh, very happy to have you. Thanks for joining me today from New York City. Uh, are you in Manhattan? Is that where you're at? I am. I'm on. I'm in the city. Daytime. It was snowing today, actually. Oh. Uh, kind of cold, but you know, classic New York City in February. <laughs> That, that's February, uh, February 1st, I think. I don't even know. Yes, it is February 1st, start of like, Black History February. Month. Yes, amazing. <laughs> uh, very, uh, boy, I don't miss that northern weather. I grew up in, in uh, Cleveland, well, Cleveland, Ohio area and uh, moved down south. I live in Georgia now, but do not miss that weather. It was really nice here today. It's 51 right now. So I'm so jealous. <laughs> I will take that any day of the week. So, uh, checking out the chat here we got uh woo let's go also these are some bangers yes correct someone's got to drop the playlist i will uh I go ahead and, and link those actually it's from upbeat do you use upbeat i know we're, we're jumping way the heck yeah. ahead uh with everything yeah. here but linda you're you're a content creator as well upbeat.io yeah. i use epidemic sound but I've i used to use them it. yeah yeah I need to check. Okay, now you're putting me on something new. Upbeat. All right, that's my next check one. That out. <laughs> so let's let's rewind a little bit. I should have a rewind sound effect here, but I don't. But uh, rewind a little bit. Start from the beginning. Linda Haviv, Linda Viva on all the socials: TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Angel Fire, MySpace, all those good things. Um, Linda, you are a developer advocate for AWS. You and I both started, I think, about the same week, if not the same day, right. back in June last year. We got introduced uh, virtually on Twitter, kind of ran into each other, met there, and then met in person in July in Seattle. Uh, and the first thing I saw you, and the first thing you did, you came up to me and said, I got an idea. I got a project. We got to do this. And <laughs> here we are today, finally, six months later going to finally get to work on this project and have some fun. So uh, what was that project? What did you come up to me and say at that? Yeah. Point? So I, I came up to Todd. I was like, Todd, I'm trying to build a lo-fi <laughs> stream on, you know, because I, I saw, I was kind of always studying, especially during the pandemic. I was always like kind of feeling like I needed something to work with and I'm a music lover. And I was like trying to do this with like EC2s and Ant Media Player and it wasn't scalable like as much. And I was just running into issues. I was like, Todd, we got to do this. This is the coolest project. I want to learn how to, you know, build that. And I, and he is like, Todd's a pro and like Amazon IVS and all these things. I have all the questions for him and, you know, just a cool guy. How, how do you not want to work with him? So oh, um, I literally was like, <laughs> I would love to build this together. And uh, lo and so, behold, yeah, he, fast forward. I'm going to ask all the questions. We were, we were <laughs> supposed to do this back in December, I think, but yes schedules uh yeah or uh reinvent conflict Re reinvent, reinvent conflicts <laughs> everything comes up of course life happens but here we are and excited to get it started so you joined aws in june last year you've been at fox in the past you were an sre software development wait a minute i've seen her somewhere uh d devlin says where where have you seen uh linda before you've probably seen her on tiktok you've probably seen her on linkedin um, how many followers do you have on TikTok? Like 700, uh, 800? So, so um, I have I don't know, like 
it's like over over 72k there <laughs> and then over 78k on instagram i don't know i look at it as community you know i i love the exactly. tech community and and i was doing well, a lot of content connecting and, and here's here's them. what i love about your content linda because so many people get that kind of audience and they turn it into just a one-way thing where they're just outputting and you, but you interact, you, you, you know, you take feedback from people, you listen to what they're saying, you, you ask what they want to see in your videos and your content. And then you kind of, you, it's community. Like you said, it's exactly. It's absolutely. The amount of people I've met through the platform that have been like people I build, build with, grow, learn with, like I've been on, you know, social media for, many years, even from the start of my journey and documented my journey when Instagram was still just photos. And there are so many people I grew with. And, right. you know, even the AWS Community Builder Program, I actually found out about it from somebody on Instagram. Really? And a lot of like my learning, yes, I'm giving a lot of information, but I'm also, I'm, I'm helping others and I'm also learning and I meet a lot of people in person through that and virtually and absolutely we're all learning together that's the beauty we're of tech we're able to build on each other's concepts and grow faster together and um when i shifted more into cloud like a lot of the community ended up also being people that were interested in that too um but yeah we're it's all a two-way street um yeah. very grateful for everybody there so you have a degree in philosophy is that right yes so uh, and that's totally cool because i have a degree in journalism so alternative paths to, to tech is something that I'm fully supportive of. Um, you know, so not having a traditional comp sci degree, I think there are many paths to get into yep. programming and technology into DevOps into the cloud. Um, you went to a boot camp in 2016, yep. right? You know, your stuff. <laughs> I, I have uh, digitally stalked you to the best of my ability. No, no, no. Just looked at your LinkedIn and kind of just scrolled That's through the list. Yeah. And, um, so point being, there's different ways to get into technology. There are different avenues. It's, yep. it's all about that lifelong learning and it doesn't matter how you get there. It's what you do when you get there and, and how you kind of continue to grow. So um, talk, talk, talk to me about philosophy. Do you still, is it still? Yeah. So this is um, a funny journey because I, I during uh, college I was I changed my major a couple of times and the reason <laughs> I chose philosophy was it was one of the only topics that felt not as much spit back um, in some respects because I thought I would go to law school so I thought it was great for pre law it it's really a jobless major because unless you're going to teach philosophy there's not much you could do with it I feel right. but um, I loved that it kind of was very broad in types of culture and topics and I was able to like learn a lot about other people through it. But it also wasn't a spitback topic. Like there was no like, and, and logic of philosophy actually has some similarities to coding, but I didn't realize that at the time because I never took a computer science class in college, which I was never really exposed to till after, after college where I was trying to build something and ended up starting to code and fell in love and was like, why wasn't I doing this for and changed my whole direction. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've kind of, not to switch gears here. I'm going to, I'm going to tie this back together in a second here, but some of the work you've done um, kind of focuses on a little bit on AI ML type things. Right. And, and so yes. I did do a talk and reinvent that was ML related, but okay. my experience isn't as much in AI ML um, okay. more. I started at more as like front end development then went into like full stack, then went into like SRE infrastructure DevOps end. And now uh, developer advocacy, but within that, I feel like I'm always learning. And so one of the things I've been trying to learn more about right now is ML AI. And I got to co-speak with um, a, more of uh, Suman, who's an expert more in that area as well, uh, and 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 Sohan from our teams. So um, I came more with the microservices end, and they came with <laughs> right, right ML end. So um, do you have any thoughts like? from a yeah. philosophical standpoint on like chat GPT, AI, <laughs> kind of like, what are the social ramifications of these? I mean, we have chat GPT. What did I see the other day that chat GPT um, s uh, passed a Harvard exam, like on its yeah. own? Like I saw yesterday intercom started incorporating it into their customer service, oh which is gosh. like, it's huge. Yeah. And um, some, someone said that it's like passing coding interviews for like yeah. software engineering yep. jobs. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think, 
there are, are ramifications. Oh yeah. I mean, I think even from a tech, from as, as a person working in tech, right? Like, I, I don't know if you, you relate to this. I want to get your thoughts too on this. Cause for me, I'm very much looking at it. Like it's an assistant. Um, I think a lot of jobs are going to, I mean, I'm, I can't tell the future, but I think a lot of jobs, of course it will take, but it will also create, I think ethicist AI ethicist will be a thing. Prompt engineering will be a thing. There's so many new roles that are going to be born out of this because as much as it's, um, it's so accurate. There's so much that could be also wrong too. Right, when, when, right. you know, so, so you have to look at it, even when you're using it, I think as an assistant and you, it's you, it's on you to like verify what you're saying, you know, even if you're using it as an assistant, I look at it like True. it will help us in, in many things, but yeah, and it'll get better. But, um, I could, I was really looking into also the prompt engineering is fascinating, by the way. Um, it's going to be a whole thing, just knowing how to prompt and, uh, I, I literally, well, I was right. like I mean, on the YouTube fiasco over the <laughs> trying to look at all the prompt engineering related roles. And I'm like, this is a whole world of its own. Um, well, it's like, what's the difference between a junior programmer and a senior programmer? A senior programmer knows how to Google things. You know, it's like yep. sometimes I guess it's just how you get the information that, that yeah. or kind for of matters. Like we're talking about music. We're going to be talking about music today. And I think, do I think it could write a song well? <laughs> no. Do I think it could give me the research faster? Things that would take me usually more time to collect or, you know, more of the tedious tasks. It, it helps also do that. But well, you know. I, don't, I don't know how much you've seen of this, but we're kind of going way into the weeds now. But from what I understand, pop music is very formulaic. I mean, there's, there's right. like literally. We could see a lot of good AI in that area because yeah. it's the same chords half the time. I right. mean, it, like yeah. the, the, the chord progression, the beats per minute, the, you know, the hook, everything is, uh, okay. We, we have our officially our first request. Vice man says, Linda is a multi-talented superstar. <laughs> Ask her to sing, please. And, uh, I have to concur that I have seen Linda singing, rapping, uh, all this kind of stuff. So, uh, would you like to, to what are we gonna sing? I don't know. What are we going to sing? I, um, I'm not singing anything. That's I, for sure. I, 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 yeah, no, I, definitely. <laughs> I'll take requests for any, I'm trying to do tech song covers. So I don't know if you know this, but I was a wedding singer for 10 years. I didn't know uh, that. No. So that was where like a lot, of, I grew up, my family's musical. And so music has always been my outlet. It's what I, I, I love to listen to music. I love to, you know, but what yeah. What kind of music I, do you like to listen to? Ah, uh, it varies. I do love lo-fi, which we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, I like soul, you know, the Dells and the, you know, but it depends. It depends. On, it, it's all phases as far as what I like to work with. I, I like right. things that are like a little bit without as many words just so I could focus. But because, you know, I'll be singing along. Um, but same, yeah, no, same. And, and, and I love like hard rock music. And like when I want to be motivated and, and like mow the lawn or like build something outside, that's what I'll put on or drive, you know, long really? drive. But I if I'm working, like, I just like, I'd rather, I just drift off. I'm like paying attention to the song. That's why I don't listen to podcasts either. Because like, when do I have time to do that? Like well, if I'm listening to it at work, I'm totally not paying attention to my work. <laughs> you know, I hear you. Like good lyrics actually make me pause because I love listening to the actual lyrics. Um, one of the songs that's been a replay right now is for me was is flowers by Miley Cyrus. I just, I thought it was so genius. The response. It's a new one, right? Story. Yeah, it was a response to the Bruno Mars song. And I know we're off topic, but it was a response oh, to the good. Bruno Mars song because I think there was a whole uh, relationship history as far as her and her ex and that song. So she was responding to that song in lyrics and kind of doing the alter version of it, which is apparently very cool. like revenge songs are like the thing <laughs> now from what I from what I heard on the radio the other day. Yes. Um, yes. It's very, it's an empowerment song. It's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, that song, like I, I just keep jamming. And every time I want, I listen to music, I'm like, Oh, how can I make this a tech song cover? Cause that's been my phase <laughs> recently. So I don't know. <laughs> I have a few on the way. All right. In we the will works. stay tuned to that. So, and, and everybody follow Linda, Linda Viva on all the socials and uh, you will hear those when they come out. So um, I do have a, a question um, trying to word it in the, the, the best way here. And if, and if you want to avoid it, I'm cool with that too. It's not like too controversial, but I'll just throw it out there. And if you don't want to, so yeah. a couple months ago, there was some talk about TikTok being banned. Mm -hmm. What do you, do you have thoughts on that? Like if, if, do you think it's going to happen? 
Um, if it does happen, what are the consequences of that happening? Yeah. So I will preface that I, I don't have the probably the expertise to speak on if like I, I could speak from a content creation standpoint right. and from a tech and yeah, a personal standpoint. I'm not asking you, standpoint. you're not oh, speaking yeah, yeah. for Amazon. Yeah, or just, just prefacing in case I know right. you know this. this right, 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 sure. But <laughs> covering the bases. Um, but um, I think for I think TikTok in general, how I look at it is TikTok's really started a whole way of us the way we consume content a short video format content. It has changed Today, it for sure. Yes, yeah. it has changed it. It has changed every other platform with it, including Instagram. You see short form videos on LinkedIn. You see it on Twitter. You see it recommended in tabs on all these platforms. Um, it is very much trying to, I think, compete with YouTube as well. And it has shifted many different platforms. So the way we're getting used to consume things and the way we're searching even from products when we're trying to buy them is through short form video. We're verifying things. TikTok is also a search engine. So... I could tell you now, I, as a consumer, go on TikTok when I try to buy something. Do It is banned. And that's why I, what I like about short form in many, many countries, sorry, it's, mm -hmm. it's banned in many countries mm -hmm. and, and even right now. So what I like to do is always make sure my content is in multiple platforms because so it's accessible. And what mm -hmm. I like about short form video is it could be scalable because we can't control what will happen to these platforms or how they evolve. But at least we could scale the same video to reach different audiences and different countries and be able to encompass that with information, especially when it's with tech education. I think for that, it's really important that it is accessible, which is something I keep top of mind. And I always have never been only on TikTok for that reason. Right. Do I love the platform as like, I think the searchability of it is very powerful because I could search things. And as a consumer, I like it. Yes. As a content creator, there are issues with what it collects. Um, I think there are a lot of issues with even how it um, it it flags things. It, it, it's, and, and many platforms in early days sometimes have a problem with flagging things. Like they flag tech content as hacker content, you know, and stuff like mm. that. There are issues like that that happen. Um, but, you know, you kind of have to scale those efforts. But I think the short form video effect has been huge. And I think with that, it's not going anywhere. I agree. It has. Um, I have so many questions. I'll, I'll start with this one. When you create your content, do you create it um, in an app or do you create it like outside of the app? Like, do you create it in TikTok, for example? And then, because you know what I mean? Because if you create it yeah. in TikTok, for example, and let's say TikTok goes away tomorrow and you have no access, do you lose all your content? Is it gone? No. So, yeah. So actually when t with TikTok, when you create a video, it does save. But I will say that I, I create sometimes outside of the app, or if I do create it, I remove the watermark and then repost. Sometimes I've shifted. So a lot of people pick a lot of content creators to do like short form or, you know, they pick one platform that they stick to yeah. um, as the, as the premium one where they create, cause it's easier for them to edit. Um, I use apps like CapCut and InShot, which are CapCut is owned by TikTok, I believe, but it's not in TikTok. So that is saved. Also TikTok itself, like, yeah, it saves it automatically when you create, but I kind of shift between editing within TikTok and editing on CapCut and InShot, which are two mobile apps. Um, and then that way I have, you know, more control. It's easier to share to your It's also other... quality. Like it, 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 <clears throat> like when you're saving it from TikTok, it just, the resolution goes down and, but there are effects you can't use. Like it really depends, but CapCut is great because it integrates too. With, gotcha. With TikTok, I so. think, I think we're probably, right. I'm guessing we would probably start to see some kind of the growth of these kind of tools that are used to create this kind of content and with the filters and the, you know, text yeah. overlays and the background songs and the sound effects, there's, all these things. And there's templates and I'm sure there's, there's a lot more like AI that's going to be speaking of AI. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more AI involved in video editing tools, especially like ones where we're trying to churn out content. Right. Um, Fil so. face filters and, and, and yeah. you know, silly, all things the things. Like <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, reminder, if you're just tuning in, we are, this is Streaming on Streaming. I'm Todd Sharp, the host, and with me today is Linda Habib. We are talking uh, a little background, just kind of getting to know Linda a little bit. In just a few minutes, we're going to actually start building a lo-fi radio station. So, um, Linda, before we jump into that, is there anything else you wanted to chat about? No, I'm so excited to build this. I've been okay. wanting to uh, embed one of these <laughs> lo-fi stream uh, um, channels 
for a very long time because I know I, I totally bothered you six months ago and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, we have to do this. So I'm very excited. Um, I have many questions. I mean, I feel like you and I could talk for hours, but um, uh, as far as uh, I think in the chat, uh, do you guys want to get start start building? Because I think- Yeah, we, yeah think, exactly. Yeah. Let's uh, let's ask the chat and- um, Up chat, to you guys. If you all have, you, any, you have any other questions before we jump into it, or as we go, of course, as yeah. always, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, but with that, why don't yeah. we, let me share my screen here. And all right. So we are going to build a lo-fi radio station. We're going to use Amazon Interactive Video Service. And what is Amazon Interactive Video Service? If you're new to the service, if you've never heard of it before and you're here for the first time today, it is a way, an AWS service that allows you to create live streaming applications. You can create channels, which are basically, if you think about like Twitch, for example, you're on the AWS Twitch channel. So AWS is a channel of Twitch. If you know you went to recursive codes, you would be on my channel. So you can create these individual channels. And if you were creating, let's say, a user-generated content application like a Twitch, for example, and your users signed up for that service uh, and signed up for a new account, you would most likely in the back behind the scenes create a channel for each user as they signed up. Um, so the first thing we're going to do to create this lo-fi radio experience is create a channel. There's a couple ways to do that. The uh, one way to do that is right in the AWS console. So you could just click create channel and you'll be prompted for a few questions. Another way that I like to do that is I think I will do that here. Actually, let me open up a larger larger font size so you can all see that a little better. Actually, I can't do that because <laughs> <laughs> it's not authenticated. So let's hope you can see that. Uh, and we'll clear that out. And so I like to use the CLI and it's really easy to do that. You basically say IBS create channel, you pass it a name, you pass it a latency mode. In this mm -hmm. case, we're going to do a low latency so we can get as fast. Uh, it, it, I guess it doesn't particularly matter in this use case because we're doing a pre-recorded kind of thing. Yeah. Normally, if we were doing like a live stream where like we're doing right here on Twitch, for example, you'd want as low latency as possible. But with something like a pre-recorded, you could probably get away with not using the low latency. Um then the type, and there's two types of channels, basic and standard, has to do with the uh, essentially the resolution that's passed through to the end user. So a standard channel mm -hmm. will transcode your video into different qualities so that if someone has a lower bandwidth connection, they will have a low latency, but it'll just reduce the quality a little bit. A basic channel does not change uh, the resolution at all. So if you import 720, for example, you get 720 out, 1080, 1080 out. And question regarding like, um, if you're trying to reach multiple, you know, different regions and mm -hmm. countries. So, so that is that kind of built into IVS? Wow. It's like, it's like you, it's like, I almost like wrote a question and told you to ask <laughs> it to me. Um, absolutely. And that, that is the amazing thing about IVS because like you said earlier, you could take an EC2 instance, you could get some open source, um, video streaming software, you could turn up your own media streaming server. The problem you're going to run into is when you want to broadcast to the Philippines or you want to broadcast to Indonesia and, and you know, anywhere around the world, that latency is going to be ridiculous and unwatchable because you don't have a network that's built for delivering these things. The IVS network has a series of POPs, points of presence, and origin data centers around the world. And also takes advantage of some edge CDNs. So your co your content is going to be two to five seconds globally, worldwide. Wow. Um, you know, with, with few exceptions, of course, based on the end user's reliable connection yeah. and so on and so forth. But as far as getting to the end of the ends of the earth, so to speak, yeah, that's all, that is one of the biggest advantages of using yeah. IBS. Because I originally, before I reached out to you, several times, <laughs> I was like trying to do this with Media Player and EC2 and building it from scratch. I was dealing with so much like, like delay. It wasn't looping and all these different. And, and I definitely like it was. It wouldn't scale. Like people would not get it as quickly if they were right. watching from different locations. So exactly, um, this is really awesome. <laughs> so uh, if we create the channel, we can go ahead and run that command. 
we get back this JSON and um, I'm going to delete this immediately so that nobody uh, can start broadcasting. But really, this is all you need to start broadcasting to this live stream channel. Um, you have an ingest endpoint. And if you're familiar with any kind of streaming to Twitch or any other platform, you have uh, OBS or Streamlabs or something. This is the endpoint that you would plug into Streamlabs or OBS to tell it where you want to broadcast to. You have a playback URL, and this is a URL to the HLS playlist for this dedicated channel. So anytime you want to create a playback experience, this is what you'd plug in there. And you also have your stream key. And again, this is a unique key tied to this channel, almost like the password to this channel, so to speak, that your software will require to uh, to broadcast to this channel. So if I back out of that, and as I said, if I refresh my page here, you can see that those channels are listed here in the console. I'm going to delete them because, as I said, if somebody were to take that stream key right now and use it, they could actually broadcast to it. So I'm going to use a pre pre-created channel that I've already created, and we're going to create our little lo-fi radio experience. So this is a very basic page that I have here. Just making sure everyone can see that all right. And what this is, is I have a simple canvas element on the screen. I have a button in the top left-hand corner, and I have a little online offline indicator over here in the right-hand corner of that canvas. So if we look at the markup, for that page, you can see here's my canvas, here's my little online offline indicator, and here's my button. So just some miscellaneous CSS classes mm -hmm. for styling <laughs> and all that good stuff. So um, the one thing that I have here that's different than if you were to broadcast from your camera, for example, is because we're doing this live lo-fi stream with kind of this animated GIF type uh, animation that loops itself and plays over and over. If you're if you're not familiar with lo-fi radio, um, why are you even here? No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No. I'm sure everybody's seen lo-fi radio, right? If not, um, if you're not you familiar, set, you with can it, link lo-fi girl or something. Yeah, I don't know. Or like, yeah, here we go. Um, essentially, it's just a an animated gift. It's just kind of really simple and kind of fun. Sometimes it's like holiday themed. You know, right now you'll probably find like a Valentine's one and. Uh, or a Christmas one, if it's around Christmas or whatever holiday it may be, you usually have some sort of animation. And then there's just this lo-fi track over the top of it that just kind of repeat, repeats. So in this case, we do have a video tag that contains uh, points to an MP4. And I, and I did it as an MP4 instead of a GIF here, just because it works a little better with, with the um, framework that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. And then it's just one pixel wide and one pixel high. So it's it's not visible on the page, but we do have to have it on the page to uh, grab it and use it as our source. So if I save that, uh, the only other thing I have here is a link to a JavaScript file and a link to our web broadcast SDK. And that's the latest version 1.2.0. And that will enable us to use the web broadcast SDK. So if we come over to the JavaScript file here, we're going to actually start creating our broadcast. So the first thing we need to do in order to do that is uh, create an instance of the broadcast client. And we do that by calling the broadcast client.create method. We pass it an object. Within that object, we have a stream config and an ingest endpoint. So the stream config is just what type of channel we're going to use. Like we looked at when we were creating the channel, we had a basic channel. So it's mm -hmm. just telling the broadcast client like the, the width to expect, the height to expect, this kind of thing. Uh, and it also have we also have that ingest endpoint that was an artifact of creating our stream that we saw earlier. Um, I should say I do have a little ser external service that grabs that value in the stream key so that I'm not hard coding them into my code. Stream key should be treated like a password and protected. So make sure you're grabbing that from a back end and not not pasting that directly into your code. Quick question. When What's you're that? in sorry, in the in the markup part, um, mm -hmm. so the is the loop 
what causes it to not stop looping? Because right, this is twenty four seven. If we're having the music, is the right. word loop here going to be the what causes it to loop? Pretty much. Sorry, I know that, it sounds yes. like no, but, no, no. I should, I should have, uh, I should have mentioned that. And I also have muted. Um, there's no audio in the video itself. The video is just the graphic. We're gonna do the so audio you're separately. The playlist. Are you, are you getting a playlist of songs yes. separately and then right? In, okay, right. and you could do that with IVS, so you don't have to do it as one video. Because that was the other issue I yep. had. Right. When I tried doing it in a different way, where yeah, I had to like upload a video with the music. Yeah, we don't want to do that because that video would be huge, number one. Yes. And number two, um, it might not be the same time. Your animation may only be 20 right. seconds and your exactly. track is 15 minutes or 30 <laughs> or an hour. And you just want the video to loop independently and the audio yep. to loop independently. Amazing. So yeah, that's why they're kind of done separately. So the video is on a loop and... Um, We'll get to the audio in just a second here and show you how that gets added. So uh, step two is to add the pre-recorded video to the client. And we do that by getting an F, uh, a reference to that video that we just looked at in the markup. And then we call add image source on the broadcast client, pass it the DOM element of that video tag and give it a unique name. In this case, I'm just calling it video track and then telling it the index. And if we're going to add, if we were to add multiple, for example, you can add um, a webcam on top of a pre-recorded video if you wanted to. And the index is just the layer of the video. So in other words, zero is the bottom layer, one is the, the next higher level, so on and so forth. Nice. So now that we've added the video to the broadcast client, we actually want to add that to the UI. Is that our do, thumbnail? Or uh, it's, no? it's so this will be so we can actually see from a broadcasting side what is actually being broadcast. We don't technically have to. So in other words, um, let me save this and we can come over here and take a look at it. So at this point, at this point, we can see it right here, right? <laughs> Can I, give, a, can I give context <laughs> of this image? Please, sure. So when I went over to Todd, I actually asked somebody on Fiverr to create. A <laughs> That's from like, Fiverr? That's pretty darn good for yeah. Fiverr. I sent them like four photos of like, my, like literally, I was like, can you make something that edit? Did it really only cost like five bucks? It cost like 40 Oh, that's like still, that's bucks. not bad at it's all. So, it's so, it's so not bad. And it actually like, there's code that I was like, can you like, yeah, I literally, although my fingers look a little weird, <laughs> you'll see when it moves. <laughs> you won't be able to unsee that, but whatever. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they look like tarantula legs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so funny. Anywho, you got the me. high pony and everything, and your hair looks a little longer in that gift than, than it usually is. Oh, yeah, I think I had a, I think I sent them photos of the ponytail extension. TMI. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> So this is just the preview. Get it back to the code. This is just the preview. We didn't have to do this. Like if we just wanted to add a button, we don't have to actually see what we're broadcasting. It's just to have that feedback from a broadcaster side of things. Um, same as if you were doing your webcam, it basically is so you could see yourself what you're broadcasting. So um, it's like something at the dollar store costing 50 bucks. Come on now. <laughs> um, I overpaid. So <laughs> so we've got the preview added and uh the next thing we have here is when that broadcast button is clicked we want to call a toggle broadcast method that's down here and essentially we call video.play so right now that video is not playing it's just kind of paused at the first frame so when we broadcast it'll actually start the animation and we do that with Broadcast client dot start broadcast, passing it our stream key. And then we just set a global variable that says we're broadcasting. So let's do step four. And this is kind of the um, the part where the interesting stuff happens with the audio. So we want to add the audio to our, our stream, right? Because if we started it right now, the only thing we would have is a GIF playing over and over and looping, but there would be no audio track. So I have this create audio stream method. And... This is kind of, it took me a little bit of time to kind of, a little bit of Googling to figure out how to do this because like, like we said earlier, we want to keep it separate from 
the video. We don't want to have a huge video yeah. that just loops endlessly and has 15 minutes of uh, music. So we wanted to have that separate track. So I have, I do have a, just a single MP3 file, but um, we could have, like I said, an entire 15, 20, 60 minutes worth of audio in that MP3. So what we do here is we create a new audio context. We get the MP3. We, we use a, an HTTP call to get the MP3. Mm -hmm. Then we grab an array buffer from that file. We call decode audio data to get an audio buffer. And we also want a stream destination. So from that audio context up here, we call create media stream destination. We get a buffer source. We set the buffer source to the audio buffer from our MP3 file. We tell it to start at zero. Then we connect it to that stream destination that we grabbed from here. We tell it to loop again because we ah. want that audio to loop endlessly. So you can make that false. That's a, like if you yep. didn't want it to If loop, you just you wanted, wanted a single, stop. you just say false. And it would just remove it from like, it doesn't matter that it's on the on the markup end. Right, right. Because that's loop, video. So that's like, separate. That, separate. The video okay. would continue to loop because we the have- The music wouldn't. Right, right, the music. The music that's would how you do the play music. through once and it would be done. So if this was false, we would have no music at some point. Like it yes, would it would but we eventually. Would still have, the other one would loop, so it yes. really is controlled separately. Sorry, I'm just making sure. No, no, and uh, really honestly, if you wanted, let's say there's a possible use case here, right? Let's say you had it, you wanted to just broadcast for an hour, and when the audio was over, end the stream. You could do that. Like you could actually right. put in like a listener and say when the audio stops, stop broadcasting. So if you wanted just a single short, so it's broadcast, customizable in yeah, that way. That's sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So then we call aud add audio input device and we pass it the stream from that stream destination that we created up here. So that's kind of the magic here. Now we have to actually call that function and the, you have to use a user gesture to create an audio context in the browser, otherwise you'll get an error. So since we have this toggle broadcast that is uh, initiated called by a button click, that's a user gesture so we can actually initialize that audio context when that button click happens. So uh, for step five here, the only thing we have to do here is call wait, create audio stream, and that will create the audio stream. Uh, this does have to be async. Let me check my notes here. Yes, so this has to be async. Mm -hmm. Question here, sorry. And, uh, Oof, go right I'll, ahead. I'll no um, problem. So, Sorry, with that with that part, um, would somebody pressing the button be restarting from a different place or can multiple people watch the same song at the same time? So, so this is like the broadcasting side of things. This is not the okay. playback side of things. So this would Got be it. like okay. as an admin, you, you uh, know, as the yeah. person kind of running the stream, this Makes would sense. obviously be password protected. You wouldn't want to, you know, like you said, <laughs> you wouldn't want to expose this to all your listeners so they could start and stop it. No, you wouldn't want to do that. But let's say you wanted to create like a whole Twitch for low fi right? For example, right. users sign up, you give them an interface to let them upload their own GIF, or maybe you have a GIF creator that allows them to upload a video and it uses like a cartoon filter, whatever, you know, you can get really creative with this. Let them upload or let them in fact have a partnership with Upbeat or Epidemic Sound right. and, and pull have in an their own tracks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's endless possibilities here. So, and this would be their kind of admin where as a user that's broadcasting, they would come in and say, now we're ready to start broadcasting. So if I click broadcast right now, theoretically, everything should start broadcasting on this channel. So let's click that. Our animation has started to, to play here. I have uh, my, my, <laughs> my the tarantula fingers are, are moving. <laughs> You're scrolling up and down on a HTML page. Yes, it looks really. <laughs> your coffee is steaming. So just like your typical. The chair is moving a little bit. I'm just, I'm cracking up. Um, yeah, it, so, it, it's interesting. I probably. It's great. I'm, it's awesome. <laughs> don't, don't. It's, I love it. I think it's cool. I love, well, it's pretty cool because people could really create their own TV, like their own channel. Right. And they could really, I mean, if we talk about AI, I would want to integrate next step, like, you know, some AI into this, maybe like a Synthesia, Synthesia. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's like. It's not real people, but you could give them a script and then it could be like a whole TV station. That, I don't know. Robert Table says that's adorable. So you've got a little endorsement <laughs> from Robert there. Thank you, Robert. Um, so 
I, while you were chatting there, I jumped over here. So we have, we've created our broadcast. We haven't created any playback yet. And we'll get to that in just a second here. But if, before we even do that, we can jump into the AWS console and we can see that our playback is, it's a way for us to test the stream to make sure that it's working. So we can see that our stream is going out over the internets and mm -hmm. available to be viewed. Um, I did not, was not able to um, get my desktop audio piped through to, oh, to we're the gonna imagine. Yard. I don't know if you can't hear that, right? Uh, no, I don't hear anything. Okay. <laughs> but you hear it. I do. We're going to take your word here. for it. Actually, here, let me try this. I put it up. To the... No? Nothing? Uh, All right. Um, actually, let me do this. Let me stop the screen share. And I think. We got to try I... playing the music. You know, why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think if I share the channel, if I share the tab individually, I think you'll be able to hear it. Let me try that. Let's try it. Yes. I no? hear it. Yeah. Hear it. Awesome. So we've got our lo-fi track, we've got our animation, everything's being broadcast. We can vibe and chill. And it is. <laughs> I love I have a weird obsession with like this this Japanese lo-fi, like these kind yeah. of like really it kind helps of you like, focus. Yeah, it's very kind of calming and peaceful to me. So So can I embed this now, let's say on my website, right? Like can somebody so create a website and then embed this kind of We thing? are going to create a playback experience right now. Oh, look at that. And we will do that. This is the kind of the bones of that. So we have our video player over here. We have a chat where our users can jump into the room and chat with each other and kind of just chill out. Oh, and you built a chat for it. I did. So That's we're gonna cool. we're gonna do that. So I stopped my broadcast over here and let's jump over to I this want to see editor. The code for that. <laughs> so to create our playback in our chat, I have a video tag over here. I have controls, basically our play button, our pause button, mute, mm -hmm. all that. Autoplay, I have muted, and just some styles, uh, rounded and shadow, just for, for make it look nice. Mm -hmm. Down here, I have a div that contains our chat. Uh, it's a chat container that wraps all of our chat elements. So I have a chat div, and this is where all the messages will be um, rendered as they come in. I have a chat input container. I have a chat message input, where this is where you'll type your message, and then I have a button that sends the chat. So if we come up here, I have a couple Lambda calls here behind the scenes to get uh, the configuration, in other words, my playback URL, and the chat token. So when you use IVS chat, and I probably should have mentioned, chat is another feature of IVS. So this is not something we have to roll from, from scratch or build out manually or go to a third party, you can actually use IVS chat, create a chat room. Actually, I should show that really quick. So if you come over here to the console, you can go to rooms and click create room. And again, as your users sign up, you could use the SDK, create their very own chat room for every user and allow them to chat with other people in their channel. This makes me so happy because trying to do this from scratch was- It's a pain. It's a pain. I, I was running into like this is really powerful because you really just have the all the kind of things you would need for a stream for a you know and everything and, this, and, and reaching different audiences and all that yep. and reliability of that. So that's pretty awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an instance of the IVS player. Now we have several SDKs. We have um, our own IVS player SDK. You can integrate with VideoJS, which is a third party. You can integrate with um, JW player, which is another third party. But if you want the best experience, you would embed the IVS player. And that is up here on line 10. You can do that just by including from the CDN. Mm -hmm. The current version is 116. And we call create. We attach it to an HTML video element. So that video tag that I had below. We pass it the playback URL to the load method. So this is that playback URL that we got when we created our channel uh, that was part of the JSON that came back. And then we call play. To create our chat, we use basic WebSockets, just like you would use kind of 
in, but instead of having to manage your own web topic, web socket server, you can use our IBS chat web socket connection. Nice. So um, you do need a token. Every user needs a mm -hmm. token and a token is essentially um, because there's things like chat moderation, which is also nice. You know, you don't want people posting offensive things or insensitive things. You can have chat moderation. You can intercept all messages with the Lambda function and actually do like, like uh, block lists. Like you can have like a block list of bad words or, you know, things you don't want people saying. And actually like every single message that gets passed to your room, you could pass them through this Lambda and moderate it that way. You can also do manual moderation. So if you have like a single person that wants to click a button and delete a message, just like you could do right here on uh, Robert table says, um, ooh, you could run the message through sentiment analysis. You kinda can, but the problem with that is um, in order to make things performant, you have to return a response within 200 milliseconds. So any kind of third party, AI, ML type things like that are going to be difficult to accomplish. Um, you could fire off like a like a queued call to sentiment, sentiment analysis and then return a message to a manual moderator that says kind of, hey, we found something via mm -hmm. AI or ML that is offensive and then have that manual moderator do that. That's one kind of way to work around that. But um, yeah, because you don't want, you know, you really don't want like messages being delayed like six seconds between when they're sent and when they get to the, or, you know, two seconds. We want to keep it performant. So we, we have our token and that token, like I said, is just a way to, uh, you can also disconnect users if they're abusive and repeatedly kind of spamming or, or anything like that. That token just allows you to know, allows IVS to know who the, connected user is so that you can handle that moderation and disconnection later on. Um, so we create a new WebSocket, pass it that chat endpoint and the token, and then we listen for messages. So to do that, we just use a standard um, message listener on the connection, the WebSocket connection. So every time a new message gets posted to chat, we get a we get that message in the event that is fired. We can parse that out. In this case, it's going to be a JSON message. And then we just render it to that chat div, right? So we just form some HTML and add it to our chat container. Then we want to handle sending messages. So to do that, every time the send button is clicked, we just get that message from the text input. We construct a payload that has an action and a content key. The action is going to be send message. The content is going to be the value of that message. You might want to do things like kind of stripping the HTML or something like that mm -hmm. from, from this to make sure nobody can send like, you know, malicious type things. And then once we have that payload constructed, we call send on the connection and base pass it a JSON stringified payload. So... Now that we've created our chat room, that's it. That's all we had to do. So if we come back over here, the browser, and we'll restart our broadcast. So we make sure that our broadcast is up and running. Everything is going out over the interwebs. And we refresh our player side of things. We see our live stream, our lo-fi stream is running. We can come over here. We can test our chat, and I will secretly send Linda a link <laughs> that she could use to join me in the chat, and she can test that out. So one second here, I'm gonna get that. Also, while um, while you do that, shameless plug, um, Todd had for for Todd because Todd has an amazing blog post series about um, IVS that I think people who want to get started should look at. And just so you know, there will be an article about the step-by-step -step for this. Yes, absolutely. Good point. Um, I should throw, I'll throw that in chat as well, that link. So I sent you a link, Linda. You could hop into that. Uh, but I will thank you for posting that link for the blog series. Also, just kind of in general, if you're interested in learning more about IVS, um, just check out the 
I, Amazon IBS tag on Dev2, and that's under the AWS org. So we see here that Linda has joined, and I can say, hi, Linda. If she could Wait, respond to me. Did you send it? Sorry. On a, oh, God, I got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in this said, chat, not in this Slack. chat. Which <laughs> chat? There's so many chats these days. <laughs> there are a lot of chats going right now. All right. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. So we can hang out. Are you are you listening Hi. to the music? Do you, do you hear it coming through your stream there? I am. Oh my gosh, I love music. So this is our lo-fi stream. We created our own love lo-fi radio. We could embed this in our own application if we have a personal website. Um, obviously, I should kind of throw it out there. Obviously, this is not a free service. You, you know, you have to be careful. Make sure you're checking the pricing and everything. I don't want anybody to go create a twenty four seven stream and come back and say. Hey, I got charged. Why did I get charged? Yeah. Just want to make it clear that it is a paid service. You do. Yep. There is a free tier though. If you have a new account, you can get five hours of input and a hundred hours of output every month on new AWS accounts. So it gives you a way to kind of play around with it. Create your own live lo-fi stream, you know, see how it works. Create your own live stream, webcam stream, whatever you want to do. Um, we have nine minutes left. I do want to show one more thing here. Yeah. And that is... Um, so we created the web broadcast where you kind of went in your browser and um, created it from the browser. There's another option for doing this, and that is to do it from the command line. So if we wanted to, we could actually use FFmpeg to – hang on, let me make this a little bigger. Oh, look, a code whisper over there. Sorry. I love it. <laughs> Uh, where's my readme? Okay, FFmpeg. So let me copy this. So I'm not going to go over every single command here. Um, but if you wanted to run it from the command line, you could basically pass it your input file, your MP3, as well as your um, why is it? Way sure doesn't like that copy paste. Let's try doing it from my terminal over here. So we paste that. Something is weird with how it's pasting. Oh, there we go. Is it okay. maybe missing? Oh no. I'm always good. I'm always like sensitive to like some sort of missing uh typo or something. Right. <laughs> like, oh, so I have our MP4 flash. MP4 video. We have our MP3 audio. So if we oh you know what? I'm in the wrong directory. That's why. So for projects, go to IBS demo and web. Okay. Now Okay, so FFmpeg is now broadcasting this right from the command line. All of this things is just all the individual frames that are being sent. But if we come back over here, we see that our web broadcast is off. You see it's offline. In fact, I can even close that tab just to prove to you. <laughs> but if, <laughs> well, we, not there. if we refresh our uh, player side of things where our live stream is running, so we can actually run this headless mode from the command line and stream it out to our IBS channel with FFmpeg. We don't have to use web broadcast. In fact, you could even use something like OBS to do this. You could add a video to OBS and your audio track. And, and if that's what you want to do to, to broadcast it, you could do that as well. So um, Robert Table says, what's better than devs getting excited about new stuff? Yeah, very excited. Nothing, nothing better. You know, Robert, I have been writing code for 19 years now. And it's when I get something working for the first time these days, yeah. I still have that same exact thrill that I had the very first time that I wrote some code and saved it and compiled it and ran it. It's just something it's, I'm so blessed to do what I love every single day and get to play around with technology, get to do live streams like this, get to create content. It's the greatest job in the world. And I'm, yeah. I'm off my little kind of soapbox and mushy kind of, little rant there but um so we created a lo-fi stream it took us about 30 minutes we used amazon interactive video service todd's we'll amazing blog is coming soon <laughs> my blog post will be published this friday if you want to follow me on twitter at recursive codes um that way you can make sure you see when i post that that would be cool that would be great that would be awesome um i'll be bothering you with with questions as i try to in integrate more features to it and you, you, build. You, i'm gonna follow that tutorial i'm very you excited follow that tutorial <laughs> you you message me on slack anytime you need anything and let's do this again sometime let's come up with another yeah. fun idea and, i kind of want to integrate uh, ai into it i want to i'll play around with this once you 
Okay. I'll share your blog post as well. Right. And yes, follow, follow your, is recursive codes, your Twitter handle. Yes. Recursive okay. codes on Twitter. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn a lot. I don't know if a lot of people are, but I feel like a lot of people are. Um, but yeah, I post everything to LinkedIn. I post everything to Twitter. I am not a TikTok user yet. Linda, do you believe that? I'll get you on there, but you know what? Short form um, video, you could put it on anything. You could put it on LinkedIn too. This is true. This is true. This is true. We're going to do a, a quick six step, seven step short form video linking to your blog. Excellent. With how to build this. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you, Chuck. Chuck says, nice stream. I'll look for the blog post. Please post it. And, uh, Thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little something different. I mean, it's not something that you would kind of think as a traditional use of an interactive video service live stream, but it's definitely something that I, I think I think the idea is like monetizable. I think people could yep. literally like build a, a lo-fi user-generated content like platform out there and let people yeah. create their own channels and uh, kind of hang out and chat with people. Because you could really put like, you could put like advert, like, I mean, you could advertise on channels like that, especially if you have some sort of, style. it's all creativity too. Like, well, and think what, of the music can... creators that, you know, right. this would totally. be a great outlet for them to get exposure for their music. Totally. And a way for people to stay on your site. Let's say if you, if you have something that's in that kind of space where people listen to it or playlists or DJ. Well, you were or... telling me, you told me, what was the site Life At? Is it? What, yeah. What's so there's name? a site called Life At that's literally all about. It's, it's a whole world of like studying on the site and all this, all, it, it gives you a lot of inspiration. So if you're looking for inspiration of what to build, um, I'll send this also in the chat real quick, but just an idea of all the things you could do. And I think trying to replicate that, it's a great portfolio project too. I think it's, I mean, it's so fun. I mean, I, I'm very, obviously I'm biased. I'm so excited <laughs> about, but. Um, it's like a study with me kind of yeah. thing. Right? And it could be so many different angles too. So I right think <laughs> Uh, Linda, w w you have, uh, the floor here to plug anything that you're working on, anything that's coming up, what, tell everybody yeah. kind of what, what you've been, what you've got next and what, what they should expect from you. You have your own live yeah. stream here on Twitch that you're going to be running. Oh, or? So I, I'm a lot, um, <laughs> joining a lot of these Twitch streams build on, we have a, a, a new show that's called winging it that a bunch of us, uh, literally wing it and follow tutorials and build on stream. And we take turns, um, following different AWS We're tutorials, different project tutorials, um, that's going to be on Fridays. We have a show called Build on Weekly, which happens on Thursday that Darko and Jackie co-host. But for me, I'll be doing a lot of different kinds of content, a lot of short form content. You could expect right now a lot of DevOps content. We're going to be doing some more DevOps content, trying to help the community onboard into some roles and upskill. Um, in, in A lot of people are upskilling during, you know, now there's a bit of a recession and people need to upskill in their jobs. And so we're trying to make a lot of content around that and a lot of other content coming and AI, ML and all these other things. So. Just awesome. excited to, and, and, you know, learning every day as we always do professional students. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, that's, that's the best part of this job. You get to learn and, and kind of dig into things and, and play around there. And there's so much to learn. Never that's, ends. I would, I would, <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing a career where you didn't have that continuous kind of right. lifelong continuing education. It would be boring. So, <laughs> for me, it would for sure. Same. same. I mean, I so. mean, I get to, I get to go bother. Like, I was like, he's so good at IBS. I, I like bothered you, <laughs> but it's like, I get to learn from so many different people and obviously working here, just seeing everybody and being able to share that with the community and being able to, um, learn together. Just, that's the best part. So absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining, uh, tune in next week, February 8th, same time, four o'clock Eastern, 1 PM Pacific streaming on streaming right here, twitch.tv slash AWS. Thank you all for joining. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.